Well, hello, and we're going to actually get started on doing some stitching now. Um, so I've got my seat frame already. I'm going to get myself set up on here. And um, as it, it was to have the, the nut end to this end, so you've got the stick end to this end as well near your tummy. And I'm going to be starting on um, this laden couch work here. And so I'm going to just use my scissors to cut, cut a little hole out. And Philip says, do it at an angle so you don't do any damage to anything. I always find cling film is such a fiddly thing. <laughs> That's it. We've pulled that back. And so now the next thing to do is to um, select the wool. And if I just read to you what it says in the instructions, thread your needle with colour 714 and secure your thread as described in your essential guide. Right, 714. I've found that already, I think. Let's have a look. Well, Philip has suggested I'm keeping all my wools together in the box, and I found 714, which is a beautiful sort of berry colour. Really like this colour. So, when you're going to get your thread from the wool, from the skein, don't go for the little one that's on the outside, which is like there, because that one, if you pull that one, it'll just pull everything here and it'll get into a real knot. So, you give it a shake usually, and Philip is uh, suggestion is it's usually the end of the wool where the where the number is and it's on the inside there and if you give that a pull it'll start coming out and her, she always says you go from the tip of your finger to your elbow and that's the perfect length. Philip has got a really good way of threading a needle and you put the wool over your needle press it really tight between your first finger and thumb then you just push the needle eye over the wall and it comes through like magic isn't that wonderful now the other thing that she says is to not have a long return so they've not got a long return and to secure that and we are going to start with single thread so we're going to put a little knot in the end and then we're going to start our stitching. Laden couch work, what an easy stitch. I always think of this stitch as something that the past embroiderers did when they were running out of time and the owner of a castle would say, come on, let's finish these bed hangings and we've got to move on. So all you do with this stitch is you come up on one side of a shape and you go down on the other. And what we're going to do is make a grid. We're coming up and down. So easy and so pretty because once you've made the grid we're going to decorate it. So first you work in one <coughs> direction up and down, up and down. Don't carry your thread right round the back because it's quite a big shape. No need to do that. And then work in the opposite direction. So up on one side and down here and then come up on the same side and down on the opposite side. So one thread's length would easily work this area but when you're working a larger area this is the one time you're allowed to have a much longer thread because of course you're not going up and down so frequently into the linen so you're not going to wear out your wool. So that's the laid work, laye, French word for laid and I'm going to just cast off across on the edge here of the next part of this feather, a couple of little seeding stitches and out the top before we move on to the next colour for the couching. Now we're going to stitch the laid work down using a couched technique. So you come up on one side of a cross and down on the other side and just make a simple stitch coming up one side and down on the other. Now you'll notice I'm going up through the diagonal line and I'm not following the line of the thread. I'm not couching there, there, there and there. I'm going up the centre like that and I find that this keeps my couching very straight and true and looking at old pieces this is how they did it. They also put in a little tiny stitch at the top of each line to keep that line in place and that means that this couching stitch doesn't pull and spoil the angle so that keeps it absolutely true. Then where you haven't actually got a cross 
but you would normally see the tail of the couching stitch, you just put it in. So you see the whole view. I think this is like looking through a window and you see the whole view behind you. So even half a stitch is important with laden couch work. So you can work in one direction, up and down, jumping over those little areas where there's a cross or where there would be a cross. So we could leave it with couching in one direction, like this. Or we could put the couching in the opposite direction and make a little cross. There are lots of variations of couching and I'm sure you'll have lots of fun with it, as I do. You could use a fly stitch, you could use a French knot to jump over the cross, you could put a whole starry stitch over the top, and I've got lots of examples of this in my kits and in my designs because I love to play and this is a very playful stitch. And there we have laden couch work, very simply worked but of course you know there are lots and lots of variations. Mm -hmm.